Let's continue talking about properties of the variance. We said that the variance of a times x is equal to a squared times the variance of x. But what about the other property we discussed in terms of expectation? In other words, what about the variance of the quantity x plus y? What if I'm interested in the total amount of someone's regular income plus their bonus, but how much that quantity varies over a population? Is it enough? Is it enough? To write this. Think about that for a moment. If I'm interested in the total variability of each person's bonus plus income, think of every person in the population, there's a, there's a number in their bank account, bonus plus income. If I'm interested in how much that number varies across every person in the population, is it enough to know only how much the incomes vary over the population and also how much the bonuses vary over the population or am I missing something here? So you can tell where I'm leading with this. The answer is that I'm missing something here. And what I'm missing is the correlation between x and y. What I'm missing is this, 2 times the covariance. And we'll discuss in a moment exactly what that term is. But first, I want you to think about the intuition, why this might matter. Covariance is a function of correlation. It's correlation, but not forced to be between negative 1 and 1, like correlation is. So this term reflects the correlation between the two variables that we're thinking of. Let's imagine two different scenarios. Let's imagine that your income and your bonus are perfectly correlated. The people who have really big incomes are the exact same people who have really big bonuses. The people who have really small incomes are the exact same people who have really small bonuses. So now imagine all the people in the population sitting there, each person holding up a sign with the total of their income plus bonus. Those high earners are going to have really big numbers because those are the same people who have big incomes and big bonuses. The people with lower incomes are going to have smaller numbers, way smaller numbers, because not only do they have smaller incomes, they also have smaller bonuses. There's going to be a lot of variability there. There's going to be a lot of variability if there's a correlation, a positive correlation between x and y. Now imagine that there's no relationship. Imagine everybody has a different income, a different salary, but at the end of the year we're going to draw from a hat to determine who gets which bonus size. They're totally independent. So now the person with the biggest income might have a smaller bonus just by chance. The person with the smaller income might have a bigger bonus just by chance. The incomes and the bonuses are going to average each other out a bit and there's going to be less total variability across the population. Now let's imagine that income and bonus are negatively correlated. In other words, we're not just randomly choosing out of a hat to determine who gets what bonus, but suppose that the company's goal is to equalize these incomes a bit. So now we're going to purposely give the smallest bonuses to the highest earners, and we're going to purposely give the biggest bonuses to the lowest earners. Now imagine all those people standing there with signs representing the total amount of money they're making, income plus bonus, there's a lot less variability because we're on purpose averaging out everybody's total amount of money. The correlation between x and y is an important part of the variability of the sum of x and y. And that's reflected in this quantity. The variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y plus two times the covariance. Just like correlation, covariance is a big positive number when there's a positive correlation. So if those incomes and those bonuses are positively correlated, the variance of income plus bonus is going to be variance of x plus variance of y plus a big positive number. In other words, just as our intuition told us, there's going to be a lot of variability in the sum of x plus y. If we're drawing from a hat to determine who gets what's bonus, x and y are independent, then this term here is equal to zero. So then the variance of x plus y is less than it was when this was a positive number. Suppose that we're purposely negatively correlating bonuses and income, then this number here is going to be a negative number. And so the total amount of variability of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y minus something. In other words, we're going to make that quantity smaller. There's going to be less variability in the overall amount of money people are making because of that negative correlation. Let's remember that the variance of x can be expressed in terms of expectation. The variance of x is equal to the expectation of x minus mu quantity squared. 
So the variance of x plus y, then, is equal to the expected value of x plus y minus the expected value of x plus y, which we can write this way, expected value of x plus expected value of y. And I, I'm choosing here, I'm choosing here to write expected value of x instead of mu because I don't want to have to distinguish between these two mu's at this moment. If I multiplied out this expectation, what would I see? It turns out that when I go through this and start squaring, I'll take the square of the quantity x plus y. I'll take the square of the quantity expectation of x plus expectation of y. I'll take 2 times x plus y times expectation of x plus expectation of y. I can write out all those terms, and if I do that, and I keep this expectation out front, I'm going to end up with the following. Expectation of x minus its mean squared plus expectation of y minus its mean squared plus, I'll go straight across here, 2 times the expected value of x minus the mean of x times y minus the mean of y. So note what we're saying here. This quantity is the variance of x by definition. This quantity is the variance of y by definition. This new quantity, which is what you would obtain if you wrote out all these terms, is by definition, so now I'm giving you a new definition, the covariance of x and y. Instead of taking x minus mean of x times x minus mean of x, I'm taking x minus mean of x times y minus mean of y, and that's the covariance. The variance of x plus y is equal to the variance of x plus the variance of y plus 2 times the covariance of x and y. What would happen here if I multiplied x by a, some constant, and multiplied y by b? So I'm going to put an a here and a b here. Well, the a is going to end up every, next to the x every time I have an x, and the b is going to end up next to the y every time I have a y. And what's going to happen then? Well, we know that when the a comes out of the variance, it's going to be squared. And when the b comes out of the covariance, sorry, when the b comes out of the variance, it's going to be squared. I'll say that again. We know that when the b comes out of the variance of y, it's going to be squared. Here, we've got an a before the x and a b before the y, but if you think about what the covariance quantity looks like, the x's are never squared, the y's are never squared, rather they're multiplied together to a b. covariance of x and y. This is the equivalent of the linearity of expectation but for variance. Turns out it's not quite linear. Turns out the variance of ax plus by is equal to a squared times the variance of x plus b squared times the variance of y. And crucially, if x and y are not independent, in other words, if their correlation is not zero, they also need this term 2ab covariance of x and y.